Okay, I'm not sure if I should say blue Efna or minimalicious, but here goes. Um, I'm going to be opening up Affinity Photo and let's see how we can assist with this image. Okay, so I'm going to open it up and I've opened this one and I was busy fiddling with it, so that's why I've called it edit, but this is the original that you've sent through. Okay, so the, the challenge that you have is that if you go onto the group you've created and you double click on perspective or click on perspective there, um, this is what happens, the image translates with it, okay. There's some settings here, but that's not going to help. I'm going to go control Z. Um, when I look at this here, my understanding of how the affinity range works is that you would be safer to attach a perspective or a live filter to a particular object in the layer. So attaching it to, to the group um, has all these sort of uh, permutations that happen and that's why we're seeing the distortions happening. Um, I would assume that if it was in the group, only the group would distort, but it makes sense to have it related to a particular layer because in a group, if you add, like you have two vector elements here, if you add a pixel-based image in there and you add one of these uh, compound images where you're able to have little handles on them when you drop them into the design, and they're all in here. When you do the perspective, it might break the process. It might distort because those other elements need certain manipulations. So I assume that's why you can't just attach it to an entire group. But there's also wisdom to having this live filter related to each of these ones individually. Now, if you really want this entire thing to be placed on the roof here, you'll have to flatten these two uh, and take them out, flatten it and bring it in as a single image. So what I suggest, and this is the solution I, I use for my work, is if I have a group, I do that with a specific purpose because if I select the group, I can move these things all together. Okay, But if I come here now, for example, and I perspectively change this, then this element I'll, I'll have to modif modify independently. So you've got to look at when you're working with different elements on their own or in a group, they each have the, the modifier to it, like the perspective live filter. So you can't have a live filter that applies to 10 layers in a group. Each one has to have it because each one distorts differently. And as I said, if you consider flattening the thing, then that's one image with a modifier that you're going to attach. But we're not going to put that together now. For your purposes, I think the following method would work better. We are going to remove this perspective. I'm going to click delete here. So we have a group and we have these two elements inside here, which are on two different layers. So when I select there, you can see it select here. I am now going to add to that a live filter perspective. There you see the notes change everything there. Okay, then I'm going to go to the roof, which is the purple section, do exactly the same, add a perspective layer. Now you can see the logic here is that when I want to move the entire thing, I just select on the group. When I want to modify or move the individual ones, I can. And it makes sense because as soon as I start to perspective distort, this green thing, if I'm going to put it onto that glass area there, might be too big or might be too small. So I would want to modify this independently. And that's where this makes sense. So if I start off here with the roof shape, I'm going to double click on the perspective and then just move that there. Let's say that is in that area. And that's up there. Okay. So now that's pretty much where we get there. Now, one is probably thinking this should have perspective with it, but because we got them independently, it gives us such a lot of more, so more, not such a lot of more, but so more, so much more freedom. So if I select now the window frame, I know maybe I want to put it over there so I can actually move it to the point I want to. And now I double click on perspective and now I can do that. And you see why this makes sense to... 
and maybe just choose a relevant point there. Let's see where we are. Okay. Okay. So there we have it now. So still, if I want to move the group, I can still move all the stuff in Control-Z. Mine is slightly lagging because uh, of the recording. But now I have full control of a perspective of each of these elements. Because if I want to now go to the roof, I can still select the layer there and maybe I want to change the tiles to black tiles. Then I just create black tiles. Um, and that's, that's how we can work. And then, of course, with each of these layers, I have all the blending modes uh, and that sort of stuff. I can still modify the percentage of it that will show through, etc. The The usual edits. Okay, so hopefully this explains why it doesn't work in the, the first place, but what the preferred way of, of working with perspective when you're working in these different layer setups. So have a blessed day, keep well, be blessed and shalom to you.